and welcome back to Youth Code Jam's online Bits and Bytes lesson. Today we are um, finishing up our Code Adventure series using the SNAP programming language. We're working on a activity called Balloon Pop, um, and much like the name suggests, we're going to build a video game that um, you get to pop as many balloons as possible um, in so much time, and if you get too many balloons on your screen, the game will end. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open a new browser tab, and I already have the home page pulled up. So if you don't, you're going to go to snap.berkeley.edu. And once you're on this home page, go ahead and click Run Snap. And just in case we have anyone joining us for the first time, or you haven't had a chance to watch the earlier Snap videos, um, I'll go over kind of what this workspace is. Over on the left, we have our blocks and the different drawers. So we have a motion drawer and then a looks drawer with different blocks associated um, and all these other ones. If you've worked in Scratch, this is gonna be pretty similar to Scratch, but not as um, not quite as colorful or as bright. This is meant for a little bit older users or users who are working with a lot of data. Um, today, we're gonna to work with a little data, which is just, data is just information, right? Um, so we're going to work with some, we're going to make a shopping list. So we're going to work with names and prices and quantities. So that's text and numbers. Um, but we're just going to do a formatted printout. We're not going to do any crazy graphs or anything like that. Um, to the right in the middle, we have our workspace. And just like in Scratch, you have your code tab. This time it's called scripts. Um, we have costumes and sounds. On the far right, we have our stage, which is this big white space here with the little turtle arrow there. And then underneath, we have that thumbnail panel so that we can uh, click back and forth between the sprite and the stage. So the sprite should be active for you, and you can tell that because it kind of has a bevel 3D effect here. Um, so that's already active. The first thing we're going to do is draw our balloon because we need a balloon for a balloon popping game. So make sure your sprite is active and click on over to costumes. Choose the paintbrush editor. Um, the activity sheet, which you can download and follow along with this, tells us to use the filled ellipse. I'm going to use ellipse, sorry. I'm going to use the um, stroked ellipse so that I have that outline. And I'm just going to click that and then take my cursor and uh, drag and drop kind of a balloon shape there. The next thing I'm going to do is try to draw that little tie off using the line tool. I'm just going to take that my cursor and draw a line like that and then one straight across or as straight as possible and then bring up the tie here. Okay, um, and the last thing I'm going to do is switch over to the paintbrush and draw a little st balloon string for us. Um, I'm not an artist, guys, so if you can make a better balloon, awesome, but this is what we're going to go with on mine. Um, the last thing... Sorry, the actual last thing we're going to do is fill in that balloon. So click on over to the paint bucket and choose any color you want. Um, I would not choose black. I don't think that's going to work well with later we're going to have a color change effect. It does not work with black. I don't know if it works with white. So try and pick um, an actual color between this range here. Just don't pick black or white. So I like blue. And I'm going to go with that color blue and just click once inside my ellipse there and click inside my little tab. Once I'm happy with my balloon, I'm going to press OK. And then switch back over to the scripts tab, uh, tab in our workspace. And let's get to work on building this code. Um, so this is a rather lengthy program. If you need to pause and take a break or if I go a little fast at some point, go ahead and pause the video. Um, but it is about seven pages of code and a lot of, a lot of steps here. So if you do need a break, that is fine. Um, this video will not take a break. You'll just have to pause it. The first thing we're going to do is get our startup code going. So go to the control drawer and get the win green flag clicked block and drag it into your workspace. So what this block will do is when we hit this green flag, any code attached to it is going to just automatically run. So it's a pretty useful um, block to start off with. And we use it a lot because of that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is go to the motion drawer and get a go to X0 and Y0 block. So this block is going to make sure our balloon starts in the center of our screen. So right now, if I hit this green flag, 
nothing's going to change much, but if I dragged my balloon over here and then hit the green flag, it would drop it in the center of my screen. Um, so that's all that block does. The next thing we're going to do on our balloon is set the size and make sure that it's showing when we start the game. So we're going to click on the balloon later and it will disappear. So when we start restart the game every time, we want to make sure it's um, there on the screen. So head on over to the looks drawer and get a set size block. So that's down here a little bit, set size to 100% and attach that to our go to block. We're going to leave the value at 100% and then back in the look store, we're going to look for the show block. So we have show right here. So that makes sure the balloon is visible every time we start the game because it's visible right now. We're not going to see any change with this code. Um, but if, when we run the program, there will be changes to it later, so this resets everything. Okay, so now that we have that done, we are going to need to keep track of some variables in this game. So we're gonna have to keep track of how many balloons exist on the screen, um, our score, so how many balloons we've popped, and we're gonna have a timer. So you have so many seconds before another balloon is going to show up on the screen. Um, and if you get over so many, you're going to lose the game. So the goal is to pop as many balloons as possible, right? So let's set those variables. So I clicked over in the variable drawer and I'm gonna click this make a variable button. And our first one is going to be balloons. And once you type balloons, you leave it set for all sprites and click okay. Um, do I need this on the screen? We can leave these active on the, on the stage. So if you didn't want this active, um, our variable visible on the stage over here, you can see that the balloons is up. You could uncheck this box. Um, but for this game, we're gonna leave that there for now. Later, you might wanna move it, but for now, we're gonna leave it there. The next one we're gonna make is a variable called timer. Again, leave it set for all sprites and press okay. And the last one we're going to make is the score variable. Okay, so we have all those variables there. Now we need to give them starting values at the game. So we're going to do that by getting this set block from the variable drawer. So it says set blank to zero. We're going to grab three of those and add them to our code block. And then use the drop down on the first to change it to balloons. And we're going to set the value of balloons to one. So we want a balloon present in the game when we start. Um, if there's zero there, the game's not going to run based on the code we do later. So we always want one balloon um, present when we start the game. On the second set block, use the drop down to change it to timer. And we're gonna set the timer to two. And on the third one, set that to score. And obviously we're gonna leave that at zero because we haven't earned any points yet. Um, so again, nothing much is going to happen when I press the green flag, except those variable starting values are going to update. So you can see they went from 0 to 1, 0 to 2, and score stayed at 0. Okay, so we're pretty good there. The next step is we're going to draw a clear pen. So this is going to clear anything that's in our, in our, on our stage um, when we start. So you're just going to go to the pen drawer and get this clear block and attach it underneath here. So again, if there's anything written or showing on our screen, like words, um, that's gonna be erased from the stage and we'll just see the balloon when we start. Um, so we're not quite done with this block of code yet, but we are gonna start a second block just to get a few things going. Um, the next thing I want you guys to do is we're gonna make the code for when the balloon gets popped. So head over to that control drawer and get the when I am clicked block and drag it up over here. We're gonna leave it at clicked. Go back to the variables drawer and when we click the balloon, we're going to um, decrease the balloon count by one and then increase our score by one. So we need two change blocks from the variables drawer. So it's this change blank by one. We're gonna set that first one to be balloons and we're gonna change it by a negative one because we're taking away a balloon every time we click on it. So we're subtracting by one. So that's a negative one. And then on the second one, we're gonna use the drop down to change it to score and we're increasing the score by one. So we don't have to change that value. 
Um, if you wanted to change how many points you get with each click, you're welcome to do that. We're going to stick with one. Okay, the next thing we want to do is hide the block. Uh, sorry, hide the balloon. Um, once we click on it, it needs to look like it disappeared because we popped it. So we're going to go back to that looks drawer and get the hide block and attach it to our second change block. So that'll make it look like it disappeared. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop on that block for now that handles the balloon disappearing. Um, we're going to go over how the code reacts to that first disappearance now. So there's going to be a couple conditions later um, that actually handle, will make clones of the balloon. This is the setup to making those clones. So right now, when we click this balloon, it's going to disappear and then it's going to come back over here to this code. It's going to jump from this first block we made to over here and then jump back over here um, once we click on the balloon. So next, I want you to go to the control drawer and let's get this wait until block. It has a little empty space after it and attach it to the clear block from this first code group here. Then go to the operators drawer and get the and operator, which is right here. So it has the empty space and in an empty space. Insert that into the empty space after until. The next step is to go to the sensing drawer and we're going to use two blocks for our conditions. So we're going to wait until um, mouse down. We get this first one that says mouse down and put it on the left of the end block. And then get this touching block up here with the drop down. So touching, put it in the second side here and use the drop down to do a mouse pointer. So what's happening here is we run our program and set everything up and clear the stage. And then this block of code says, wait until mouse down and touching, sorry, touching mouse pointer. So what this is saying is that it's basically waiting for us to click the balloon the first time. So until we click the balloon, nothing else is going to happen. Once we click the balloon, it will start um, making clones of itself and we'll get more and more balloons on the screen. So let's start with that code now. You're going to go to the control drawer and get a forever loop. Um, so this will execute. Anything inside of here is going to execute as long as the program is running. So until we hit that, in this case, we're going to make a game over condition. So once we hit that game over condition, then the loop will stop. But until then, it will keep running. After that, still in the control drawer, get an if then else block. So right here, this is an if then else block that, um, I guess that one is, I guess we just want the if else block here and drop it inside of our forever loop. So we're going to make our condition. So if balloons, we're going to have the losing condition up here. So if our balloons, um, if there are more than nine balloons on the stage, then we're going to end the game. So to set that up, go to the operator's drawer and get this greater than um, operator right here. So it's an empty space, the greater than side, and then an empty space. Drop it inside that um, blank after the if. Go to the variables drawer and get the balloons variable block. Put it on the left side of our operator. And this does matter because we're looking at the count of balloons, which is stored in our variable. So we, if the count of balloons is greater than the number nine, type nine on the right, then the game's going to end. So balloons does need to be on the left side of the operator for this one. Okay, after that, head back to that control drawer and we're gonna get a broadcast message block. So we're gonna have to, it's actually up at the top in this one. So we're gonna get this broadcast and then there's an empty space afterwards. We're gonna get that block and put it inside the if part of our statement. Click on that drop down and create new. And this is going to be our game over message. So we're going to broadcast game over. And we're also going to stop the script from executing. So this causes a break in the loop and, and, and helps in the game um, and execute. I think it will execute the our uh, game over message. So yeah. So in the control drawer, go ahead and scroll down until we find the stop all block. Put that under the broadcast block and use the drop down to change it to this script. So like I said, this is going to send a message to stop the game. 
Um, and then this script is going to stop, which means that this, this is the script we're stopping right here, which allows that game over message to execute another block of code that we're going to write in just a little bit. Okay. Um, so now we're going to work on our else statement, and this is going to be where we create the clone. If we still have less than, if, if we have less than nine balloons on the screen, we're going to create, we're going to keep creating clones of it. So still in the um, control drawer, go ahead and get a wait one second block and put it inside the else statement and then get a create a clone of block. So that's going to be, I think that one is down here. Yeah, create a clone of blank. Attach that to the wait one second. Use the drop down to change it to myself. So we're not actually going to wait one second. We're going to wait for whatever time is on the timer. So we need to head back to the variables drawer and get the timer variable block to replace over the one second. So now it says wait timer second. So whatever number is in the timer, it's how many seconds we're going to wait before creating another clone of the balloon. While we're in the variables drawer, we're going to change the timer. So we're going to make it faster every time a balloon um, generates on the screen. So we're starting at two seconds and we're going to use the change blank by one block to change how we're going to change the timer each time. Um, so get that change by blank block, use the drop down and set it to timer. And we're going to set this to a negative 0.02. Um, so it's very slow, but in seconds, that's going to make a pretty big difference because, again, we're only starting with two seconds, right? And that's what our timer is set to. So right now, when we start the game, it's going to start with um, two seconds before the next balloon is made. And then we're going to decrease that amount each time we make a balloon. So we'll start with two seconds, and then it will go to 1.98 seconds, and then 1.96 seconds, which sounds like it's a lot of time, but it will slowly get faster. Um, so if you want to make this game really hard, you can increase this negative 0 0.02 um, later. But for now, just leave it at that so you can see how it works. The very last thing we're going to do in this script right here is add our color effect. So head on over to the looks drawer and get a change ghost effect by 25 block. Um, and I'm not going to attach this to my code because I ran into some itch issues before I changed it to the color effect. Um, so go ahead and just drop it into your workspace. Use the drop down to change it to color. Change the 25 to 45. And then add it under our change block from the step before. All right, we are getting close to the end. We have about 10 more steps to go, I think. So we're on step 20 now. We're going to write the code that handles the actual clone showing up on our screen. Um, so go to the control drawer and get a when I start as a clone block. Let's see when, when I am clicked, when I received. I think it was down here. When I start as a clone. I'm just going to drop this about there for now. Um, and just like we did when we set up the balloon, we're going to use a size block. So we'll go back to the looks drawer and get a set size to 25%. So change the 100 to a 25 so it gets really small um, and doesn't clog up our whole view of the screen. And then also while we're in the looks drawer, we want to make sure that's showing. Because remember, we hid the balloon originally, which means we hid the clone. So when we start as a clone, we want to make sure it's showing. The next thing we want to do is every time we create a clone, we need the amount of balloons to increase over here. So go back to the variables drawer and get a change blank by one block. And all we need to do is change that to balloons. So change balloons by one. Um, so when we generate and clone of the balloon, we have to tell it where to go. Um, we're not going to give our balloons a specific spot to go because we want it to be a surprise to make the game um, more challenging. What we are going to do though is give it kind of a random range to go that keeps it inside of the stage. So go to the motion drawer and get another go to x0, y0 block. Attach it to our last change block. 
Then go to the operator's drawer and you're gonna get a pick random one to 10 block and put it in both spaces um, after the X and Y. So we're gonna get rid of both those zeros with this block. So right now both X and Y are say pick random from one to 10. Um, we're gonna change the values for X to be negative 200 to positive 200. And then the Y values are going to be negative 40, neg sorry, negative 140 to positive 140. Um, so if you remember, we start at the center of our screen is zero, zero. Going le left will go all the way to negative 200. Going right will go all the way to positive 200. Up is 140, down is one is negative 140. Um, so that's where those values come from. Just gonna push that over a little bit. Let's see if I can make the screen a little smaller. There we go, so we can see the code. Okay, so we have that set up. That's what the clone's gonna do. The next thing we're gonna do is finish our game over message. So head back to the control drawer and grab this when I receive blank block drop it into our code, use the drop down to set it to game over because that's the message we're looking for. And then head over to that pen drawer and we're gonna change our pen color to something. Um, you can change it to whatever you want, but get this set pen color to block and attach it. If you click on this little colored circle, it will bring up the color gradient wheel here and you can just click on whatever color you want for the circle. So I used a blue balloon um, I think I'm going to use purple text. So it's a purple color there. The next thing we're going to do is tell our pen where to start writing, which is very important. Otherwise it might um, write the words off the page. So we're going to use another go to block from the motion drawer. So go to X zero Y zero. And we're just going to change the X value to be negative 80, negative eight zero. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna position our pin um, in the center, um, vertically centered, but over here to the left of the center horizontally. So it will write from over here and finish over here. The next thing we're gonna do is go back to that pin drawer and get a right hello size 12 block. Change the 12 to a 40. Um, and then we're, instead of saying game over, we're gonna actually s display the score. So to do that, we need to go to the operator's drawer and get a join block. So it says join hello world. Drop that in over the hello. Where it says hello, replace that with the word score. Whoops. And a um, colon afterwards, and then I added a little space. Then head to your variables drawer and get the score block and put it over world. So now when our screen prints, it will say score uh, colon and then the actual value of the score. Finally, let's go to the motion drawer and get another go to X and Y block. And we're gonna change those values to 120 for X 1, 2, 0 for X, and 10 for Y. So that's just going to move our pen um, up to the, right up, no, up to the upper right corner here, I think. Yep, 120 over here. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to kind of move our pen out of the way. So that is all the code. That was a lot of code. Let's go ahead and give it a test and make sure that we did it correctly, or that I did it correctly. Um, I'm going to space out those variables for a second. Um, actually, let's just make the screen bigger so that we can see. There we go. So I'm going to hit the green flag. And you can see it's all executed. It's waiting for me to click. So I'm going to click the balloon. There is the balloon again. It's smaller. And you can see it's changing colors. And you can see my score going up. Um, I'll let a couple show on the screen. 
So you can see that balloons is at two now and it goes up and down based on how many are on the screen. My score goes up, the timer decreases each time I click a balloon, so it's getting really fast. Um, eventually it's going to get so fast that there will be more on the screen. So I'm gonna play this until it quits on me or until I lose, really. Um, so this is the point of the game, right? We're clicking away. I wanna see how far we can go before the timer gets too fast for me. Trust me, we'll get there soon. And I'm just clicking with my mouse. So we're still above a second. So you can see how long it takes for our time to decrease. Um, we just hit 106 on our second, so 1.06. Now we're at one. Um, so now it's getting a little faster. You can see I'm not getting them as much. Um, but that kind of sees that that's a very slow decrease before we get a lot on the screen and I'm dangerously close to losing here. All right, so I got 10 and I got a score of, um, it looks like 69. So I got 69 balloons. Oh, there is a little glitch here. Um, I'm still able to click that last balloon and didn't hide it. I don't think it hit it because it wasn't gone. So maybe that's something we can add into our code is that um, when I receive game over, there should be a hide block in here. So let's test that real quick and I won't go as long. Um, let's see what happens if we do that. So you can see it started out as a new color. I'm gonna click There it goes. So I'm just gonna let uh, 10 blue balloons populate on our screen so that we can test if that hide code gets rid of um, a balloon. So we're at seven, eight, nine, 10, yep. Um, so if you don't wanna have that extra balloon at the end, go ahead and add that hide block into your code um, so that it doesn't do that. That's not something we saw in development, but you know, Sometimes you don't catch everything and that's the fun of code. Um, that's all I have for you today. I know that was a lot, but if you still wanna play, you can um, test with the adventure mode. So you can make a condition where you win the game. You can speed up that timer to make it even harder for you guys. Um, you could also add a floating effect to the balloon. So maybe they don't stay in place, but maybe they move around on the screen and kind of float up and down or side to side or something like that. Um, you could add a sound effect so that every time you pop it, it makes a popping sound. Mm, that's up to you. I think that's gonna be really loud. Um, and then you can create a special balloon sprite that pops in maybe so many seconds into the game or um, after you hit so many balloons and it can be a special balloon that if you catch it fast enough, you get extra points. Um, so there's a lot you can do with this, a lot of fun things you can add to your game. It's all just limited by your own imagination. Um, a couple things before we go. Today, September 15th, when this video was filmed, was the start of our sign up, our registration for our virtual code jam. This is a free online event for students in K through 12. So how this is gonna work is that you sign up for it and then you are sent a schedule of workshops that you might wanna sign up for or your student in particular wants to sign up for. Um, and they can attend these. They're gonna be mostly on weekends. I think maybe a few in the after school hours, um, but it's gonna go over several weeks and students are gonna get to work on a project either individually or in a group to solve a real world problem and enter it into a competition. So there's a lot more than that. That's a very quick summary of what's going on. Um, but if you scroll to the page, you can register here in the corner. Um, there's some important dates down here. So registration is open until the 25th. So workshops will start. However, workshops are gonna start this weekend. So you can register and join us at any time. Workshops are gonna start on the 19th and go through the second. We're gonna have a help session on October 3rd. So that's gonna be, we have awesome volunteers who are running some of our workshops. You're gonna to get to talk to YCJ staff about 
I'm trying not to sneeze. I'm really sorry if I sound funny. Um, about any problems that you're having with your project that you're working on. Your actual projects will be due October 4th at 11.59 p.m. I hope you're all in bed and turned that in long before. There's going to be about a week for judging, and then we'll announce the winners of the competition on the 14th. Um, and here's our sponsors I saw earlier. I thought I saw a schedule for workshops, but maybe I didn't. Learning resources, maybe? I'm not sure what I saw earlier. Um, but the workshop schedule will be sent to you if it's not on here somewhere. Um, let's see, submit, learn, create. So this is how to sign up. More calendars. Yeah, I can't find that link right now. I thought I saw it earlier. Um, but you'll be sent some information later about that. Sign up, project themes. So here's some themes, here's some resources. Um, the dates, like I said. Maybe it was moved. Um, but yeah, workshop information will be sent to you. I don't know, maybe it's under sign up. So this is going to take you to our active page. Which has all of our bits and bytes stuff. Um, that's the second thing I want to talk about is we already have our activities open for registration through the end of October. So Bits and Bytes is going to be available um, for sure through the end of October. We're actually for sure going to be here for the rest of the semester, the fall term. Um, but we have activities planned out and open for registration already aligned through October 28th. So like I said, this today, the 16th, is the um, last day of our SNAP coding series. And then we're going to switch to the Puzzle Club coding series from um, September 21st through the 30th. We'll come back to a Code Adventures with Beetle Blocks, which is about um, coding 3D objects. So it's similar to Snap and Scratch, but more f it's definitely more focused on what you're building with it. It's not quite as varied with the programs. And then this last one, I know this is going to sound a little boring to kids. This last one is our Digital Literacy Unit. Um, last time we did cybersecurity, so we learned about passwords and encryption and decoding messages, um, kind of stuff like that. This time we're going to focus on some basic computer skills that um, you're not necessarily being taught in school. A lot of you are only working with mobile devices, so these skills are going to be focused on keyboards and um, kind of word processing applications and files, which aren't necessarily things that exist in the tablet environment so it will be very beneficial for you to have a desktop or a laptop or even a chromebook um, some stuff you could do with a tablet if you had a keyboard attachment to it but um, androids my imacs kind of do they don't really support you having a file system of um, your own kind of files so a file system would be like i go to my finder and I have a file system for all my school and my classes in there. And that's not really supported in a lot of tablet environments, um, but that's going to be something we learn about. So that's the one caveat to that one. Um, but we're going to make it fun and have lots of competitions. But these are skills that you really need to learn. Um, and that's why we're teaching them. Other than that, I think that's all of our announcements. As a reminder, if you go to youthcodejam.org and then go to the Bits and Bytes tab under Jam at Home, we will have the current series summary close to the top with the registration link. Um, so that will take you to that active page. The most recent activity we worked on will be at the top and then underneath we'll have past activities. These will only be available for the first month. Um, it looks like some code broke here, so we'll go in and fix that. Um, but these will only be available for the month they appear in. So this will be all of September's activities and then they'll disappear. If you want to find the videos afterwards, you can go to YouTube. They're all there. You just won't have access to the activity sheets after the month is over. Um, that's just what we've decided to do to keep the page from getting too cluttered and overwhelming. So that's it. Um, I think the only thing I didn't tell you was that website for the jam is wecanjam.org. Oh, that wecanjam.org will take you here. Um, okay, so for real this time, that's all I have for you guys today. Sign up for our live sessions and I hope to see you at them. Have a great day.